What's going on, everybody? Well, the 2023 NFL Draft has come and gone. And if the NFL Draft is Christmas morning, then right now we're in that period between Christmas and New Year's, which would be the NFL schedule release coming out on the second week of May. Many questions coming into the NFL Draft for the Minnesota Vikings arose. Are they going to get their franchise quarterback of the future and trade a bunch of first-round picks? Are they going to bolster the defense? How about wide receiver two? Well, fifth-round pick Jaron Hall is a quarterback project. He's not Dante Culpepper, and he certainly is not Kellen Mond either. How about we let this guy play a few snaps in the NFL before we declare him a bust or Hall of Famer to be? Yes, he's got a lot of good qualities. Leadership, athleticism, maturity. Yes, the guy is 25 years old as of a month ago, but remember, he sat out for two years doing missionary work. So in reality, football age, he's about 23. Over the last two seasons, thrown for 51 touchdown passes and only 11 interceptions. And oh, by the way, has amassed over 600 rushing yards and six touchdowns as well. He's not a finished product. He's not a perfectly polished diamond. Guess what? Neither is Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, or Anthony Richardson. That's why you hire coaches, to coach them up, to see how they can take skills that were once somewhat successful at the college level, although, again, BYU is not Alabama, but that's why you hire coaches, to develop them and to make them better and to hopefully help them translate into the NFL. I like what I see from this guy, and I believe there's a lot of clay here that can be molded into, at minimum, a solid NFL quarterback, if not a franchise quarterback. I'm not willing to say that, yes, he is absolutely ready to take over in 2024. No questions asked. He's going to absolutely develop, but he has the skills that I like. And most importantly, he has the skills that Kevin O'Connell likes. As for the rest of the Minnesota Vikings draft, yes, Thursday night, we got to see our shiny new toy in Jordan Addison, and he will start as the Vikings number three wide receiver. KJ Osborne is in a contract year, and he's going to be given every opportunity to ball out to either get himself an extension or put himself in a position to hit the open market next year to get his new contract. Having said all that, I'm not ready to put Jefferson, Addison, and Osborne as 3D 2.0. I like the fact that this offense now has more weapons for Kirk Cousins. Hopefully, Jordan Addison will allow the Vikings offense to not get so bogged down if teams decide to take away Jefferson and actually have a second receiver that will make them pay more often than just a handful of times. As for the Vikings' third-round draft choice, Makai Blackman, he, along with fourth-round pick Jay Ward, will bolster the Vikings' secondary, and I like that this appears to me anyway to be back-to-back picks for Brian Flores. Listen, we all remember what it was like during the Zimmer days where we had two outside corners, an inside slot corner, and our safeties. But if you look at all of the acquisitions the Vikings have made thus far this offseason, a lot of the secondary players are not pigeonholed into one specific slot. Byron Murphy can play both outside and inside. Jay Ward has had time as outside corner, safety, and inside corner. There will be days when Byron Murphy will just cover the other team's best wide receiver no matter where they go, outside, slot, backfield, whatever the case may be. But this secondary is now configured to have players that can play multiple positions, hopefully with the return of Andrew Booth Jr. and hopefully the continued health of Caleb Evans. This secondary now has a lot of depth. We'll have the pieces that Brian Flores needs to be able to turn this defense into, dare I say, respectability. Vikings fifth round pick, Jacqueline Roy, is the pick I am most enamored with. At 6'3", 305 pounds, this man is a beast of a human being. And let's be honest, on a team with a halfway decent defensive line, he would probably be a rotational player. But for the Vikings, he could very well be a day one starter, or at least a guy that sees over 50% of the snaps starting right from the beginning. I am really looking forward to see what he does paired next to free agent acquisition Dean Lowry. And frankly, he's not going to be the Lawrence guy from the New York Giants, but I do believe he is going to be a solid piece and is going to be able to make an immediate impact on a defensive line that got absolutely no interior pass rush whatsoever last year. Whether that was personnel or Ed Donichel, we'll never know. But hopefully this year we can see some improvement. And couple that with the defensive back acquisitions, Ryan Flores now has some pieces that he's going to actually be able to do something with besides let a team cut us to pieces 10, 15, 20 yards at a time. Vikings final draft choice to Wayne McBride running back out of UAB is a complete and utter wild card. On one hand, I love his statistic that 4.6 yards after contact on average. That's ridiculous. I don't care what level of football you're playing at. It's utterly insane. Listen, this guy might end up being just a practice squad guy, but if he is able to crack through the Vikings running back committee, I actually like where this guy could be headed. Ultimately, my expectations of him aren't all that high at the moment because he doesn't offer much in the passing game, but 
every time you watch film of him carrying the ball. He's either spinning away or he's bowling over people. Whether that will translate into the NFL, it would be nice to see this guy at least become the Leroy Horde. If you need one yard, we'll get you three. Or if I need five yards, we'll get you three. I won't get too much into undrafted free agents because ultimately I would just be throwing it against the wall to see what sticks, which is what undrafted free agents are. But I am utterly, utterly enamored and frankly shocked that Cincinnati linebacker Ivan Pace Jr. did not get drafted. He was slated to go somewhere between the third and fifth rounds. And maybe because he's five foot ten, which is a couple inches shorter than what most teams want a linebacker to be, was enough to scare off every single team. I'm really glad that the Vikings scooped this guy up. Yes, he's not much of a linebacker as far as pass coverage, but run blitzing, rushing the quarterback, stopping the run. This guy has all of the tools, and I really hope that this guy makes the roster, and I even hope that he manages to crack the starting lineup by the end of the year, because if he hits his potential, he and Brian Osamoa could be an utter nightmare for teams from a linebacking standpoint. Those are my thoughts on the draft. Tell me yours, whether it's the traditional A through F grade or give me a player that you are most enamored with outside of Jordan Addison. That's relatively simple. But leave some comments below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And if you haven't had a chance, check out the highlight package I put together of Jaron Hall. And that is our skull to the next episode.